If you're getting ready to take your life and health insurance test, then stay with me because I'm going to try and give you a handful of tips that will make that process a lot easier for you. Hi, my name is Jeremy Smith, and over the better part of the last 15 years, I've been an agent, a trainer, a manager, an owner operator of an insurance brokerage, and for the last seven years, I've been a business coach traveling the country helping agents and agency owners grow their practices. Stay with me because today I'm going to try and help you grow yours. If you've been on YouTube before, then you know the drill. Please hit subscribe and ring the bell. So, like I said, if you're at that point where you're getting ready to take your life and health insurance test, I want to try and give you some tips today that might make that process a little bit easier for you. The first thing I want to talk to you about is set a date and then study towards that date. I can't tell you how many agents I've had come to work for me and I've checked back with them two, three weeks later, sometimes even more than that, and I say, have you got your test date scheduled? And they say, no, I'm still studying. Listen, this process you probably ought to be able to get done in under 40 hours of total study time, okay? The best way to do it, I understand some of you may be working another job before you go into this, but if you just study and study and study and, and wait till you get to this point where you think you're ready before you set a test date, which will be another week or two out most likely, you'll never get there. The best way to do it is put a time clock on yourself. Set the date, even if you've got to set it out for 30 days out. But get it on the calendar and then you can study for that date. The next step is to really know how you learn. Do you learn by listening? Do you learn by reading? Or do you learn by writing? Uh, to me, I know that might sound crazy, but that's how I learn. Uh, if I want to memorize something, I have to write it down. But know how that works for you. You can find audio books on this information. Obviously, your, your self-study guides, you can read them. Um, and I always read them and then wrote, the, wrote everything down. That's how my memory worked. You figure out what works best for you, but understand how your brain works. Treat this, this study process as if this is uh, information that you're going to need for your career, because it is. But if you take that mindset versus trying to just study so you can pass the test, it, it'll, it'll just be gone by the, t the time the test is over. And you're going to need all this information once you get in and actually are actually licensed and into this business. So the next thing is print the exam. If you print the exam, you'll be able to tell how this test is weighted. It'll tell you which subjects are going to have more questions in them and which subjects are going to have less questions. So you can study towards that weight. Uh, the next thing is, is make sure you're taking these practice exams. They're awesome. If you, if you take all of these chapter pra uh, practice exams and you get over 80% or so on all of them, you'll be in good shape. I think you only got to, most states, you only got to pass with a 70% uh, testing score. But use these testing exams and focus on the, the, the questions and the areas that you do bad on to study more on. Time management, don't cram. I talked earlier about setting the, uh, the exam date down the road and studying for that. Use that time, set the exam based on how much the allotted time you're gonna be able to have on a day-to-day -day basis. Don't save it all for the three days before you take your exam. Here's a really good one that people don't think about. Every time you go take a test at the exam site, they will, they will provide you with a blank sheet of paper. As soon as you get in there, you should do a memory download of all of that cramming and all that studying you've done right then and there for five or ten minutes. You've got plenty of time to take this test. Do a memory, a memory download on this sheet of paper before you start actually taking the test. Um, you would be amazed how many questions answer other questions on this exam. It's like taking your driver's license test. The questions are not that hard, but they're tricky how they're worded. And so you're going to get, even if you know a section from front to back, you're going to get tripped up a little bit on the questioning. If you, if, if you don't quite know the answer, skip the question. You'll be amazed how many times as you move forward, you're going to find other questions that give you the answer to questions that you uh, weren't able to answer. Look out for all these questions that end with accept. I don't know why, but the Life and Health Insurance Test loves this uh, technique. And those are going to be the ones that trip you out. So if you've got a question that has accept at the end, take a step back and read the question. Read it without the word and figure out which answer doesn't fit. The last thing I'd say is take the test in the morning. 
it's just like anything else we do in this world. If you take it in the afternoon, who knows what chaos is going to happen to you in the morning. Uh, that by the time you get to test time, your brain may be half fried. It's scientific fact that we learn and, and we focus better in the morning we do the afternoon. So set your test date in the morning. I hope all this helps uh, as you practice and get ready for this stage of your life. I wish you the best on your test and we look forward to seeing you on future videos.